Greetings my brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. Today my topic is the sign of the cross. We know how the sign of cross is made. We use our right hands and we bless our foreheads, then our chin or our lips and then our hearts. Sometimes we do it on the forehead, on our mouth and then on we go as long as our stomach. Different meanings, different significance. We have the East Indian, the Eastern Church and the Western Church. We find how tradition, how the apostles after they received the Holy Spirit, instituted that whenever they did something good, whenever they proclaimed the word of God, they had to bless themselves and bless also others. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus said. Go out to the whole world. Gospel of Matthew 28, chapter 20. Chapter 28, verse 20. The last verse. Go out to the whole world and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The triune God, the Father God, the Creator God and the begotten Son, not created but begotten. The Holy Spirit, neither created nor begotten, is, is God. The three persons in one God. We do take mention in our physical selves before we start a journey or before we eat a meal or we see a symmetry passing by a symmetry or we see an accident or we see an ambulance or we see any kind of suffering or any kind of joy if somebody is doing something great or we are taking part in an event an athlete, if you find an athlete who believes in Lord Jesus Christ doing the sign of the cross just before the event. And after completing, again thanking God and signing the cross. Today we'll see how the cross have to be signed. So my brothers and sisters, <coughs> the sign of the cross in Latin is the signum crucis. It's a prayer a blessing and a sacramental prepares the individual to receive grace and disposes one to cooperate with it. My brothers and sisters, when we enter the church, we dip our fingers into the holy water and then sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit indicating that we are entering a sacred place where a God lives in the holy tabernacle. So when we enter a space, we have to cleanse ourselves. And that is the reason the water we bless ourselves cleanses us to be in presence of God. So that is a prayer, a blessing and a sacramental prepares us to receive the grace what we are going to experience in the Holy Eucharist or the sacrament of reconciliation or any such event, matrimony, if you are entering, go bless ourselves and then we enter. St. Cyprian explained this in the 3rd century that Christ's redemptive death, death on the cross, the cross is the sign of Christ and faith of Christians. So my brothers and sisters, because Jesus Christ died on the cross, a cross with a vertical arm and a horizontal arm, a vertical arm connects humanity to God and the horizontal arms is the one shows that how God suffered for humanity to have that relationship restored. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses we know that they are one of the groups who do come and who visit us, but they do believe that it is idolatry. They do not believe in the sign of cross. For them, it is good because they do not believe in Lord Jesus as the Son of God, begotten Son of God. They just say that Jesus was a person who was 
God. But we know that Jesus is God. He is the second God. He is the second person in the triune God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Basil the Great Apostle taught themselves the sign of the cross to be done in the forehead, in the lips or in breast, either with the thumb or with the index finger. This is a powerful weapon against all impurities and unholy spirits. And this is the teaching of Saint Basil. Now, the Hispanics, the people from the Latin America, they do the sign of the cross and they say, protect us by the sign of the Holy Cross from our enemies, deliver us, O Lord. And that is the prayer all the Hispanics say when they do the sign of the cross. By the sign of the Holy Cross from our enemies, deliver us, O Lord. Now, the sign of the cross is done either to bless oneself or cross oneself. And this is the sign of the Trinity. This is the sign of the Trinity of the Church. Now the Eastern Churches, especially the Byzantine time, they use the three fingers, the three fingers, first three fingers, to touch the forehead. And then use the two fingers, the other two fingers bent, so that to indicate that God was man as well. When Jesus came into this world, he was both God and man at the same time. Saint Tertullian used to say this, make this statement, wear out our foreheads with the sign of cross. We need to make as many times the sign of the cross because that sign would help us protect our heart, mind and soul from all the unholy and evil and impure spirits. The priest announcing the gospel text makes the sign of the cross in his forehead, then in his lips and in his shoulders. Now, how we do it is we sign, use our right hand, we use the forehead and then the lips and then the breast and then the shoulders. Saint Pope Innocent III used the three fingers, he explained those three fingers are meant for the tr Trinity, the two fingers for the divine and human nature of Lord Jesus and also we sign, we find Saint Athanasius by signing all scourges are driven away. So my brothers and sisters, when we sign the cross on our foreheads, lips and our breath, we are driving away all those scourges that could come in our way. So let us practice signing of the cross at every situation we are going to enter in. Saint Theodore, he taught us that the Father was never incarnate, the Son incarnate but not created, the Holy Ghost neither incarnate nor created, but issued from the Godhead. Therefore we do the sign of the cross. Saint Peter of Damascus, how the devils, the demons, the diseases are dispelled by sign of the cross. So my brothers and sisters, in all sicknesses, in all illnesses, a sign of the cross would be the first weapon. The downward movement signifies God's descent from heaven. The left and the right indicate that our Lord overcame the devil and the death. And that was the teaching given by Saint Peter of Damascus. Now, priests and deacons we find in our church use their right hand, while bishops may bless with both their hands. We have seen this during the ordination of priests, how the bishop blesses them with both their hands. Now, 
if there is a perceived blasphemy immediately we do the sign of the cross to ask pardon from god for forgiving that person who committed that blasphemy we may also do the sign of the cross and pray lord have mercy when we do the sign of the cross we can see god to have mercy shown us some other signs we we say even during the start of an event or an athlete he just signs of the and then he participates in the race that is surrendering to the will of god whatever happens let it be the will of god st john vianney said a genuinely made sign of the cross makes all hell humble so my brothers and sisters the sign of the cross is powerful when we bless this living temple our body is the living temple of god and god dwells within us so when we do the sign of the cross we are blessing god the triune god the father the son and the spirit and that's the theology of saint john vianney now dipping in the holy water before entering the church it signifies that we enter the sacred place the priest signs the eucharistic minister and the deacon before the, mini, the eucharistic minister or the deacon is allowed to read the gospel now matthew chapter 28 verse 19 go therefore make disciples of all nations go off to the whole world and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit these are the words of jesus in the gospel of matthew galatians chapter 6 verse 14 but far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our lord jesus christ by which the world has been crucified to me and i to the world the cross is a symbol of both death and hope for for paul writing to the galatians so that's what paul is writing to the galatians the sign of the cross is signifies the hope we have in the cross the death which can be given to us by suffering in the physical world but then we also have the hope of resurrection so the cross signifies that though we suffer the horizontal arm we will have the connection to our heavenly father who would give us the resurrection to draw us from the bottom of those depth and take us to heaven So here Paul tells Galatians be but far be it from me to boast except in the cross of the Lord. So he wants to only glorify and boast that the cross of God, the cross of Lord Jesus Christ is everything. But my brothers and sisters, there are many enemies of the cross who all talk that no Jesus did not die on a cross. He was just tied in a kind of a trunk of a tree. and that's how he died that also mounts to our uh, friends jehova witnesses they also say that and there are many other people who all say that jesus was put on a tree and not on a cross my brothers and sisters we have a church instituted by lord jesus christ himself lord jesus said you are peter and on this rock i will build my church so he authorized he bestowed authority on peter and then when peter whatever he binds on earth will be bound in heaven whatever is loose on earth will be loosed in heaven so when that happens when that authority is given to peter and peter transitioning that authority to the successive popes to our present day pope francis God's kingdom is alive and active. God's church is alive and active. So whatever 
the Pope does from the chair of Peter. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. So our duty as the flock has to be obedient to this teaching and to this authority. How the apostles all were obedient to the directions of Peter. Though they had many opinions, ideas, how Paul comes and corrects Peter when he is not mixing with the Gentiles, about when the question of circumcision arises for the Gentiles. But then God will send, but the authority of Peter was always kept intact. So God reveals everything from his representative, the shepherd. Our Lord is the chief shepherd who would come to judge us. But the shepherd for our present time in this physical world is our Pope, His Holiness Pope Francis. So my brothers and sisters, the sign of the cross is the first and foremost action we do contemplating the triune God. So we do anything and everything in the holy name of God by signing ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. When we sign ourselves in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit, then we are blessing the God who lives within us, a God who dwells within us because we are the temple of the living God. And God is present within us. So when we bless ourselves, we are blessing the God within us. So and then when we bless our children, our spouses, our friends, our relatives, and all our younger brothers and sisters, when we bless, we bless them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And that blessing is the powerful weapon to make everybody holy, pure and to drive away all the scourges that may exist at that point in time. So my brothers and sisters, let us make this as a practice. Whenever we do anything, get up in the morning, put the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. When we go outside to do our work or our business, whatever we do, we, sign, we make the sign of the cross before we drive. We come back, we make the sign of the cross. We bless our children before they go to school. We bless our spouses before they go to the work or whatever they do before we step out. My brothers and sisters, this practice of signing the cross is from the apostles who taught us and then we are continuing this. Let's keep this tradition. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. I hope you liked it. Please send me your comments and also subscribe so that you get all this 400 plus videos. Bye now.